Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Chinaza's Life. In today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys my top international travel tips or just travel tips in general, wherever you go to. There's also some mistakes that I made that I would want you to avoid, so stay tuned and we're gonna go ahead and get started. So if you've kept up with my most recent videos, you'll see that I had to pack for a three week trip. I went to New York first and then Nigeria and then Ghana. And for those who may not be familiar, Nigeria and Ghana are both West African countries. So that means that I had to pack clothes for summertime. And obviously New York in December is freezing cold. So I had to pack winter clothes as well. So that's just something to take into account as far as what I had to bring along with me. And there's definitely, definitely some things, obviously aside from just packing, um, leading up to everything that I'm gonna go into detail about. I didn't rank these in any specific order. I feel like it all just depends on where you're going to because certain things as far as like, let's say a passport or visa or vaccinations may not apply if you're just going to another state for the weekend. But if you're gonna be traveling internationally, those are things that you need to look up in advance and to do in advance so that you have the best possible outcome there's no problems, no wahala as Nigerians would say. Also, just a calm little disclaimer, I was supposed to shoot this video like right now it's a little bit past midnight. Um, I was supposed to shoot this at like 4 p.m. but I just had such a busy day, a busy and productive day so don't get me wrong, it was good. And then I was finally able, I was about to shoot, I was taking my thumbnail pictures. As I was taking pictures, my camera ran out of memory, well my memory card ran out of memory rather. So I'm like, alright, I'll just go switch it out. So I grabbed my handy dandy Pelican case, which is by the way, one of the best cases ever. All of the memory cards that I have were legit full. And I also haven't really backed up anything to hard drive, which I know is really bad, but I have a lot of it on my computer as far as like my recent trips and everything. So. It's not like the footage was gonna get lost if my memory card got corrupted for whatever reason. But I've just always, I just hate dumping footage and transferring it and yeah, but clearly, so that delayed me by about an hour or so because I decided, I'm like, honestly, I might as well do all the cards, wipe everything clean, transfer everything, just so that I don't have to do it again for a while, so. Yeah, anyways, this is why I even run out of memory in the first place, because I just ramble and ramble and ramble. This has nothing to do with the video. But you know, maybe it does though. So if you're into tech, I know some people would like to vlog during their trips, whether you're bringing a camera or you're bringing your phone. Make sure to clear space on your phone or your camera before traveling, because that can be a time consuming thing and you want to be turning up, you want to be taking pictures, you want to take pictures of things, of people, with people, of yourself, and you're not going to be wanting to spend time in the hotel room, dumping footage when you could just go with clean slate, you know? So before you travel, you know, in that downtime, instead of scrolling on Twitter or on Instagram or on TikTok, because I know TikTok is really popular nowadays, but the point is clear some space on your phone, clear some space on your camera before traveling. So when it comes to your luggage and your suitcase, I know that most people always have a carry-on. Something to make sure of before traveling is to make sure that your carry-on fits whatever your airline specific uh, size limits, size restrictions are, because sometimes it varies from airline to airline and sometimes you'll get to the airport thinking that you won't have to check a bag and then they'll be like nope it doesn't fit into this little thing so you have to check it and pay extra money so definitely depending on the airline especially um, when you're in a different country you never know what their rules are going to be especially if you're not used to flying with them so definitely when considering bringing a luggage or a suitcase just make sure that the size restrictions and everything comply with whatever is posted on the airline's website or if you have to call them, just call them. Like, you'd rather be safe than sorry, unless you know you're balling and you're just able to dish out money like that. But I know that that's something that I always make sure to do because I'm someone who tends to overpack and we'll get to that because I'm trying to do better. Also, when you're traveling internationally and just in general, you know, you want to make sure that your belongings are safe. So I definitely suggest getting a lock and key for your suitcases, for your carry-on, for whatever that you're going to be traveling with, honestly. It's unfortunate, but sometimes your stuff can get broken into, so it's just like, it's better to be safe than sorry. Another one of those cases, you don't want it to be where something is missing from your suitcase and you were wishing that you had locked it, so. And also when it comes to your suitcases, I definitely suggest, if you don't have already, buying the suitcases where they have the four wheels. Like, it's actually such a lifesaver not having just two wheels, I feel like that's 
so old age. So I even just upgraded to get a new carry-on recently. So that's something that is definitely, definitely important because Especially when you're just traveling, connecting flights, you want to have a carry-on that can just swivel through, that you're not going to have to worry about getting stuck on anything. And also, if you're the type of person to use like a duffel bag or something like that, I, I used to be that type of person too. Um, no, stop doing that. You're hurting your shoulders for no reason. Get you a carry-on that you can just pull and life is just that much simpler with a carry-on that has wheels. Something that is so important, again, for your carry-on, and I'm speaking from a hurt place, is packing at least three to four-ish days worth of clothes and also undergarments whether that's like your bra your underwear etc and then of course like toiletries inside of your carry-on the reason for that is of course it's nice to have it within easy access if you know you're gonna wear it within the upcoming days but also in the event that your main suitcase gets lost which in the event of my suitcases both of them did not arrive to Nigeria until three days after I got there. So, guess what I had in my carry-on? Literally one outfit that I had already wore. So if you watch my vlog, I did insert a clip uh, that what I wore in Morocco basically is what I had to wear the first day that I was in Nigeria and then my cousin was able to take me to the mall thankfully and I literally had to buy new underwear new clothes all because my clothes i didn't have any extra clothes with me um aside from what i had that one outfit in the carry-on obviously i didn't expect for that to happen even when i did pack my suitcase to go to new york i kind of had that like literally my carry-on was all full of just like clothes and outfits so like for a domestic trip i would have been I would have been good, Gucci, if my bags didn't come while I was in New York, like, it's like, all right, like, that's cool, like, I mean, it wouldn't be cool, but in theory, like, more so, like, I had, I packed the right way for that, but I just never expected for my bags to not come, like, you know, sometimes it comes, like, an hour late, a day late, like, I've never had that personally happen to me, but I've never heard of someone's bags coming three days late, like, I was devastated, y'all. To make matters worse, I had to travel that same night, or we were planning to travel, uh, that same night five hours away to a city called Obomosho and we ended up going later on in that day like the next day basically and I wasn't able to come and retrieve my bags until they came finally but three days later so it's kind of like I had a bunch of outfits planned all these things and I legit lost three days worth of outfits so my heart my soul Another suggestion that I would have is to pack light, and there's so, so many reasons for this. This is something that I strongly need to start doing because it's just ridiculous, the fact that my suitcase was overweight already, like, or just on weight, basically, coming from here, like, coming from America, going to Africa. And usually, when people do have a bag that's, you know, we're allowed two suitcases, a lot of the times it's common to bring things for your family that they may not have easy access to or just to bring gifts um, just, you know, to your family. That's something that a lot of Nigerians do, a lot of Africans do in general. So, you know, like people will know that you're coming and then you bring stuff for them. Unfortunately, I literally had my suitcase full of just stuff for myself and it was just like clothes and outfits that I thought that I needed so, so badly that I legit didn't even end up wearing because you get so tired when you're over there, like, jet lag is real, y'all, like, jet lag is so serious, like, I think I didn't fully, like, adjust to my sleep schedule and everything, or, like, I was just falling asleep during the day, which is technically night here, but over there it was the daytime, for, like, a whole week of being there, like, it wasn't until I got to Ghana, really, that I was finally, like, adjusted, and I'm like, okay, like, I'm awake now. So that's something to keep in mind, like you're gonna bring all this stuff, but a lot of the times you're gonna need rest, like you're going to be tired, and even being jet lagged can just make you feel sick, make you feel sleepy, make you want to just stay in the house. So that being said, you're not gonna need all those sets as to, you know, I mean, if you have the space for it, and if you have the weight allowance for it, go ahead but i would just suggest you know packing light especially that you can bring things home you can buy stuff while you're over there and not have to worry about paying extra baggage fees since you pack light going when you go back then your bags should be just the right amount something that i probably would do differently the next time that i go is just bringing like sleep medicine along with me 
or just bringing like energy drinks or getting energy drinks while I was out there because I definitely did sleep through like a lot <laughs> um, and obviously I went over there to be able to spend time with family so I guess those can be some ways to cope with the jet lag which also leads me like speaking of just of medicines and everything like that vaccinations are something that's important especially when it comes to you traveling internationally now going to nigeria i have a nigerian passport so there's certain things that people who let's say they have a nigerian visa or they're applying for a visa for a certain country every visa requirement every passport requirement it always requires you to have like different things so there's not one set oh you have to have this shot you have to do this you have to do that but there's definitely some things that you can do as precautions such as you know getting like malaria pills and things like that as to prevent it when you're traveling to certain countries that may have uh, a presence of that and even depending on the country that you're traveling to you may be denied entry if you don't have proof of these vaccinations Ghana for example since I had a Nigerian passport I didn't even consider that I would have needed anything any type of medical vaccination to get into the country however it turns out that you need like a yellow fever card uh, basically to verify that you have had a shot for yellow fever within the last 10 years luckily certain countries like going to Ghana they did have the yellow fever uh, shot available at the airport upon entry but you know you're gonna want to do these things in advance so that you can just go and enjoy your stay versus having to wait in a line and do this and do that and then now you've wasted time of your vacation when that's something that you could have done at home so definitely depending on the country that you're traveling to or just in general you know ask your doctor be like hey I'm gonna be traveling to XYZ part of the world is there anything that you think I should get or you know looking up on the visa requirements or the passport requirements or whatever the case may be seeing if you as an American citizen or whatever country that you're from need to have certain things as to be guaranteed entry into the country as far as it relates to medicine and vaccinations etc at the end of the day the point of all these things is to make sure that you know you're well while you're in this country you know you're going on vacation no one plans to get sick you know no one wants to go on vacation and be sick in bed the whole time no one wants to go on vacation to get malaria or yellow fever so it's just important that you know you do these things so that you know you can turn up and enjoy and be nice and healthy but also, depending on the time that you go, if you have like allergies or just different things like that, obviously it's bound to happen that you can have some sinuses. So just bring whatever medications that you already have, especially bring in excess just in case you may not be able to um, get a refill and different things like that. So obviously bring as much as your own personal medications, whatever restrictions, dietary restrictions that you may have, you want to bring those things along with you because it's not always going to be easy to find depending on what country you are in. When it comes to packing, I think it's very helpful for you to have like a checklist and not just a mental checklist because that's something that I'm usually doing. Like I'll write down a few things but then in my head I'm like, oh, well, I know I need this, I know I need that. I think actually just having a checklist, whether it's on your phone or whether you write it down in your notes, I think it's important and it just helps you to stay on task. And also packing in advance, as much in advance as possible. Like I don't care if it's a month out or three days out. But the point is that you should be packed and you should weigh your suitcase, you should weigh your items. Um, just so that you know exactly what it is so that you're not having to unpack at the airport I was that person at the airport unpacking and repacking right before security so as to avoid that You know the shame the eyes everything the annoyance of having to do that Definitely just weigh your stuff in advance, that way you know um, as you're even shopping that you're like, oh wow, like it's only like 24 pounds when you have like a 50 pound allowance. That means I can add XYZ. So I think it's better than doing it on the day of or the night of or a few hours before your trip, even if it's a domestic trip, because trust me, it's better to pack in advance and just be ready versus rushing to get things done last minute. Because as you know with life, sometimes things just pop up. And all of a sudden, you gotta go pick something up, you gotta go pick somebody up, your phone's ringing, someone needs help, this, like, you just wanna make sure that your stuff is straight, that you don't gotta worry about nothing, except for showering, grabbing your bags, driving to the airport, and getting on that plane on time. I'd also suggest getting your passport renewed. Let's say that your passport expires in a certain date, like a few months out for now, it's good to make like a mental note or put something in your calendar to remind yourself to renew it. Even if you don't have an upcoming trip, you never know what could come up and like it could be the opportunity of a lifetime and now you don't have your passport. 
Um, I know it can be fairly quick for some people, but sometimes it does take a long time, especially for certain different countries. So I just always think that it's good to always have your passport status updated, even if you're not going to be traveling internationally. Because again, like, what if you win the lottery and boom. And also just because, I mean, I know that it's not just American citizens watching my video, but this is to Americans. Just because we are American citizens doesn't mean that you're gonna automatically be guaranteed entry to a certain country. So definitely while considering certain locations, check what the requirements are, check if you need a visa to enter that country, and just see how long the processing times are. Watch people's videos, ask questions as to people who've traveled there before. So for flights, Booking for flights, especially for international flights in advance is like one of the best things that you can do. Just in general, as you near closer to the date for a flight, like the price is gonna go up. So for me, I had bought my ticket to go to Nigeria in August. And as you guys know, my trip was in December. Um, and I believe the flight price was 1600 I want to say. And mind you, this was for a 21 hour journey. We had an 11 hour layover, like it was just a lot. So if possible, and if you can afford it, I definitely suggest flying directly, especially when it's gonna be a long flight, if you're comfortable with that. Cause even me, like I thought that I was comfortable with long flights until like four hours into the flight, I started to go crazy and yeah, say a prayer before you get on planes, guys, because I'm saying to fly direct because it definitely, definitely, definitely is convenient for knowing that your bag is on the plane and your bag will be there as soon as you arrive versus having connecting flights because you never know. Your first flight can make it and then your bags make it to your destination before you do. And again, when it comes down to security, now your bag's just on the carousel, it gets picked up. Like it could just be a lot of trouble and a lot of trouble that you can potentially avoid if you can book in advance as to get a cheaper ticket and a shorter flight duration. And obviously that's being on the plane for less time, which means that you have more time to spend on your vacation. And I mean, who doesn't want to spend more time on vacation? Something that I didn't do as far as uh, accommodation is looking at, you know, when people like tap their locations. I think it would be pretty cool. I mean, obviously people, this is depending on people responding to you or not, but I think it would be pretty cool if let's say you're gonna stay at, um, I don't know, the Marriott Hotel in Dubai or something. If you click on that Marriott Dubai, and then you see when people post pictures like in front of the pool, like basically when you can tell that someone has stayed there in the past, and you could just DM them about their personal experience or if they have like any like advice as to uh, when the best time was to book it or how far in advance they booked their ticket. Um, I think that social media is definitely a powerful tool and you never even know. Sometimes they can be like, oh, I live here, da -da, like give you the hookup or something. Obviously, it's also good to read reviews on the hotel websites and on hotels.com, etc., etc. But it's nice to know, especially when it comes to lesser known hotels, that it's like, okay, this place is real. People actually stayed here. This is what it really looks like versus the stock photos. A lot of the times negative hotel reviews are hidden, obviously, um, for a reason, because they want to just attract as many people. And I know sometimes uh, it can get hard when you're just looking for any place to stay. But while you're on vacation, I think it's important to stay somewhere where you can actually, I know some people don't care, but I think, again, it just depends on your preference and for me preferably I want to stay somewhere where I can actually feel comfortable laying my head and not just where I can pay the cheapest so you want to be able to get whatever amenities it is that you're looking for and I think having that human experience and being able to ask someone how they actually enjoyed their trip and in real time versus just reading someone's review something that some people may not be willing to compromise on is being in a hotel or Airbnb uh, that is on a busy street or in a busy area where there's lots of noise especially at nighttime or in the early morning just depending on the type of sleeper that you are or whatever you have going on I know for my recent stay in Ghana that was something that we didn't know of I don't think anyone really looked into what the nightlife was like or how close it was in relation to the hotel but there was legit a nightclub right like 500 feet on the same exact street as our hotel and they would play music until like 6 a.m. like blasting like loud we had to feel the bass like we're literally in bed and it's just like at a certain point you'd be tired like 
it was nice, uh, you know, like the first night, but then sometimes it's like you just come in at like 3 a.m. and you just want to go to sleep instead of going out again. Especially for someone like me who doesn't fall asleep too easily, that was definitely an annoyance. As far as money when it comes to traveling, definitely something to keep in mind is deciding beforehand if you would rather prefer to use your credit card or your debit card or use cash. Me personally, especially when traveling, I like to take money out in advance no matter where I am. I feel like sometimes it's easier to use your card, yes, but I like to use my card when it's linked to my phone. So that's using things like Apple Pay or you know just using like Cash App or like Zelle, different things like that. But as far as actually swiping my card, sometimes it's just annoying because Bank of America, I have Bank of America, even though sometimes they're like, oh, tell us where you're traveling to and you'll be fine, da da da. I've done that before and my card gets locked and then sometimes I'm not able to withdraw money and then it's just like, it's a mess. That way I just have money on me versus having to worry about, they're like, oh, well, your card will be unlocked by this day or oh, we suspect fraud on your account. And it can actually happen too, you know, just being that you're gonna be in a different country or you're in a different state. Like sometimes, like even though you may put in a travel notice or a travel alert on your bank account, Things can still happen, people can still steal your information, obviously that can happen any day, but the fact that you're swiping in a foreign country, it's just... Save yourself the trouble, um, unless you're comfortable with that, and also, of course, depending on what country you go to, there may be no issues at all. So me personally, I brought a set amount of US dollars to convert in Nigeria and to convert in Ghana. I actually didn't end up converting anything in Nigeria just because I didn't really go out that much. And basically, as far as food and whatever I needed as far as transportation, that was provided by my family. Thank God for them because it was just nice to not have to convert. But one thing I would say is don't convert all your money at once because a lot of the times, depending on the country that you go to, the currency exchange rates can vary and let's say that you convert 200 US dollars and you get that currency. Sometimes when you don't spend it and let's say you just want to give the $200 back and get your money um, and get $200 back, it's going to come to way less just because of the exchange rate and obviously so that they can profit as a business. So I wouldn't say change all your money at once, it's just kind of like change as you go. And that was something that was very convenient in Ghana. I believe that they called it Forex. So basically like on like every other block, they had a place where you can go and transfer money, uh, which was nice and very convenient because <sighs> the Ganyan Seti, like that thing, like we spent a lot of money. I mean, it wasn't a lot, a lot, but like as compared to Naira, like we were spending way more in Ghana on just like food and like travel, just different things like that uh, as compared to Nigeria. So it was definitely an eye opener, but it was nice to be able to just do like, let's say let's convert $50 and get 500 setis. The main thing is you should just do what you're most comfortable with, but then of course, always, always, always just alert your bank when you're gonna be traveling. Just in case you even do take out cash and for whatever reason you may need to put um, your card on a tab or you need to use your card for something or an emergency happens, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you have emergency money and that you have your card as a backup or vice versa. Just having two forms of money but then also always keeping it in a safe place and not traveling with everything at once either. This world is getting crazy and crazier each and every day so I definitely suggest if possible that you travel during the daylight hours. Um, you know, things are just easier, I feel like, in the daytime as far as like crime and violence because I know certain areas, especially when you're a foreigner, you're seen as an easy target, unfortunate as it is, but it's something that is a reality, something to keep into consideration. I'm not saying don't travel or to be scared of traveling. The point is, just be alert, be on your P's and Q's, don't carry millions of dollars around with you, don't be looking so flashy. The goal is to, you know, you're gonna, you're there to embrace the culture, you're there to embrace the city. This definitely relates more to the international side of travel, but I guess it can relate in a domestic way as well. But I would say just when you are a traveler, you're, you have to think of yourself like you're legit a guest in this country, you're a guest in the city. So treat the city with respect, treat the people with respect, um, try new things, you know, you don't want to just go out to a foreign country and be ordering chicken wings still. like. You know, try the culture's food, try the city's food, just get to know the people, be kind to the people, um, give back if possible, you know? That's something that I definitely want to be doing every time that I do go to a foreign country, is just kind of like giving back in some way, 
whether that's through my service or through my talents or just through monetary donations, whether it's like a tip or like donating to a foundation or something, you know, like I feel like there's just so much in the world. Like we're coming here, we're coming to the country, we're using their resources, but what are we giving back to the country? Uh, so that's definitely something that I want to implement in my future trips and just, you know, just actually not just being a placeholder, not just going there just to go there. And I believe that as with every trip that you go to, it doesn't matter if you're going to another city or another state or just the next town over, I would say that you're always learning something from traveling. And that's why I think I like to travel so much because with every trip that I've had, I've legit learned so much. You get to see the world in a different way. You get to see how other people are living their lives. And it kind of makes you step outside from yourself and to just realize how small you are in relation to the rest of the world. And it can just be definitely an eye opener to just be like, wow, like it makes you more grateful for what you have. And then it makes you just want to be able to be a part of a bigger change. At least that's how I feel about things. Um, I don't know if this is how everyone feels and I feel like I'm getting like, super like sentimental right now but it's honestly true like being able to travel is a privilege whether you're traveling again like intercontinentally or cross country or again just to the next town like not everyone is able to um, just get up and go obviously people are hospitalized people have job commitments some people are in countries where they're not able to freely travel so the fact that you're able to just get up get in your car hop on the plane hop on the train, just go wherever um, and see the world and have different experiences each and every day or if you plan it out months in advance, you know, definitely make the most out of your vacations. So something that I like to do when I travel is to just document my travels and obviously you guys know that I'm someone who's very visual. So my preferred method of documenting is taking videos and taking photos. Um, just to look back on, I love looking back on my old photos in general, but it's just nice to see where you were a few months ago and to again, like just have that feeling of like gratitude and to just have that appreciation for your travel. But if you're not someone who likes to take videos or photos or that's not your preferred method, definitely find whatever that is for you. So whether that's journaling while you're out there or, you know, just speaking about it to other people, um, it's just nice to share your experience. Um, to document your experience and again like it is a privilege to be able to travel whether far or close don't let anyone tell you that just because you're not traveling to another country uh that you're not traveling like that's that's dumb like you can cross city lines and literally there can be such a difference in the people and just the culture and the food just everything you know it's just don't don't listen to that like that's this no before i ramble on for too long those are definitely some tips that i'd like for you all to take into consideration when planning for your next trip and when you're on your next trip something to consider as well so as always if you're not subscribed to my channel already pause the video make sure you're subscribed we are on the route to 1000 subscribers and thank you guys so much for tuning in with me today and for watching this video and just for all the constant support that you guys give and right now it is 1 a.m and uh your girl is tired so you know we got this video out we got it together we gonna shoot earlier next time but uh, i definitely appreciate you taking out your time and just just listening to me chat i just like to be able to give you guys my honest opinions on things and especially as it relates to travel so i'm excited for upcoming content as it relates to travel i have a few surprises for you guys so make sure to stay tuned turn those post notifications on so you know what i'm posting something new so yeah, thanks guys and have a blessed and beautiful day.